How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. In today's video we're going over some cheap or affordable medium format cameras. I actually covered this topic on a previous video on the channel, but I had a ton of comments that wanted another one, and I had a ton of comments also giving me feedback on some cheaper, more, well I guess less known cameras. So I figured I would compile a list, did some research, and uh, yeah, here we are. So let's just jump right into it. All right, so the first camera is the Moskva 5. The Moskva 5 is a medium format rangefinder folding camera made by KMZ and produced between 1956 to 1960. It's an almost identical copy to the Zeiss Super Iconta C, which is an amazing folding camera. In fact, it's considered one of the best folding cameras produced between the 30s and the 50s. The Zeiss camera would be a great, more expensive alternative if you can find a nice one for around two to $300. Getting back to it, the Moskva was produced to be a professional camera and not at all a consumer camera when it was created. Another interesting selling point for the camera, I guess, is that it can shoot both 6x6 and 6x9 formats, making it a lot more versatile than many cameras even today. Also, it shoots between shutter speeds of 1 second to 1 250th of a second and shoots 120 film. These cameras were also incredibly popular in Russia throughout the 50s through the 80s, especially in street photography subgroups. Because of these cameras being so old, many people don't know much about them or anything about them at all, which makes them go for a lower market value in general. Because of these not being super popular, they sit right below $100 for a historical, versatile medium format camera. Just make sure you find a working one and watch a tutorial to know how you're shooting it correctly. When I was searching for these on eBay, I found the vast majority to be between $50 to $100, so they sit at probably one of the cheapest medium format cameras you can find. Next up is the Pentacon 6. The Pentagon 6 is a 6x6 camera created by Pentagon, obviously, and it was modeled after a contemporary 35mm SLR. After the unification of the East German photographic industry, the camera, previously known under multiple different names, became the Pentagon 6. The 6 was imported into the US as the Hanamax Practica 66 by an Australian distributor, Hanamax. This was to get around US laws prohibiting direct imports from communist countries, a nice workaround that pleases me today still. The Pentagon 6 comes with a simple waist level viewfinder with a flip up cover. A non metered prism was also available for the Pentagon 6 with a TTL metered prism produced later. A third party adapter allows the metered prism from the Kiev 60, which is based externally on the Pentagon 6, to be attached to most Pentagon 6s. It is brighter, shows more of the viewfinder, and they can be found new. The same adapter also allows the Kiev 60 waist level viewfinder to be used. This finder is reportedly inspired by the one found on a Roloflex TLR cameras and is also better than the original Pentagon Finder. These bad boys are priced between $100 to $250 on eBay with some of the more expensive full kits being around $3 to $350 mark. Third on the list is the Mamiya Press. The Mamiya Press is a line of medium format rangefinder system cameras manufactured by Mamiya and is probably the most popular camera on the list. The first model was introduced in 1960 and the final model was discontinued in the 1970s. It was targeted at the professional press photography market and a wide array of accessories were offered. The maximum image size that can be captured is a 6x9 but images can be taken in a number of different formats and using several different types of film. All of the lenses have leaf shutters which are released in the lens itself, not through the body as is typical with most cameras. These are made to be especially quiet which makes sense why they're press cameras. The shutter is typically triggered from one of several models of removable grips, all of which have a built-in release cable. The original Mamiya Press was introduced in 1960 and came with a 90mm lens. It also has a bellows mechanism on the back that allows up to 15 degrees of tilt and 31mm of extension. The press has a variety of lenses from 50mm f6.3 all the way up to a 250mm f5.0 with tons of lenses in between. Lastly, the press comes in at a very reasonable price for being a fairly popular camera, right around $200 to $300 um, with obviously more expensive kits being $300 to $400. Next up is the Afka Isolet. The Isolet, which I'm hoping I'm saying this correct, I've actually never heard of this camera prior to doing some research on it, but it's a compact folding camera that shoots 120 film, both 6x6 and 6x4.5 formats. These are pretty old cameras dating from the original coming out in 1937 to the Isolet L, which was the most recent one being made from 1957 to 1960. 
Different lens and shutter combinations were available, allowing a wide range of levels of specification. All have front element focusing and the shutter releases on the body. Film Advance is on a wide, flat knob using a red window. There are two red windows in the back, one for each film format. The original model was called the Soldaten Camera, excuse my German, translating to the Soldier's Camera in Germany during the war. Because of how old and simple they are, there isn't much to talk about these in all honesty. These guys come in around $100 on average, but I've seen some of them on eBay that are around 1000 and the only thing I can really attribute that to is that they're in mint condition or never used and have a highly coveted lens. Otherwise, you can find these in excellent condition for right around that $100 price point. Okay, last but certainly not least is the 6x7 Kony Rapid Omega. The Kony Omega is a Japanese medium format 6x7 rangefinder camera. Variations of the camera were produced for nearly 30 years, between 1954 to 1981, manufactured in Japan despite having American origins. The camera shoots 120 film, but can be equipped with 220 film if you needed to double your exposures. The film advance is via a pull-push operation on a handle on the side of the camera. This makes for fast advancing, and hence the source of the name, Rapid. The lenses are focused by a large knob above the film advance, a pretty unique design compared to many other medium format cameras made in the 70s and 80s. Additionally, these cameras came with no light meter, so an external light meter is needed. These cameras also require a dark slide to change lenses and or film backs. The dark slide is part of an interlock system that prevents the shutter from being fired with the dark slide in place, which is pretty nifty. Sadly, the lenses are quite limited on these with only five total lenses. The normal lens that it comes with is a 90mm f3.5 Tessar with shutter speeds from 1 to 1 500th of a second and minimum aperture of f32. Lastly, these cameras come around the ceiling of this list. Um, on eBay, they're around two to $300. So while they are a budget medium format camera, they are on the higher end of this list. So that's all the cameras I got for you guys today. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if I missed any cameras, otherwise check out my first video that I talked about these, as I'm sure there's many cameras that would be commented down below that I covered in the first video. Otherwise, if there's any specific camera you guys want me to cover or a camera that I missed, let me know and I'll definitely get on that. Make sure you stay up to date with me by subscribing down below and like the video if it taught you something or showed you a camera that you didn't know about. I definitely learned a lot from making the video. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, peace out.